Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. It is bright and early, folks, and your boy is about to go and chew up some miles in the mountains. Weather conditions are prime, not too cold, certainly not too hot at that time in the morning now, and nothing but miles and miles of trail and adventure await. I mean, I have to do something to kill the time, or I would die of anticipation waiting for Thursday. Judge Preska has ruled that the unsealed 418-page deposition will be available to the public no later than Thursday morning. Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers tried to scrabble together a last-ditch attempt to try and get this to stop once again, trying to appeal once again, trying to use technicalities once again, but Preska was having none of it. She rejected the motion, and then, on top of that, put her thumb in Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyer's eyes and fast-tracked the release. I've said it for a while now, and I definitely believe it 100% at this point. Preska is one of the good guys, good women, I guess we should really say, right? Super women in this regard. There has not been enough federal uh, judges who have had enough backbone and enough spine to stand up to the so-called elites and tell them that their literally decades-long crime spree has come to an end. And Judge Preska is doing her part. I really hope that the rest of the judges that are involved in this case as it moves forward show as much character and as much backbone as Judge Preska has throughout this whole entire thing. She sniffed out their bullshit from the very beginning. And then she craftily handled these fools the whole way through, including Dershowitz and his team of goons. So... You'd be hard-pressed, as you all know, to find somebody who is more critical of the judicial system in the United States and of our federally appointed judges. But when credit is, is, is due, credit should be given. And Judge Preska certainly deserves credit, and she, she has earned my respect by her behavior in this case. And that is a difficult job for a judge to do when you're talking about somebody like me. Because I really don't trust the system. And it's it's apparent that we should not trust the system. But every now and then, you have a shining light like Judge Preska who steps up to the plate and does the right thing. And it's not like she did anything out of line. It's not like she stepped across uh, 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 um, some boundaries or anything. She did the right thing. These judicial documents should be made available for the public. The public has a vested interest in this case. I mean, the unit of public corruption is handling it, right? Well, doesn't that mean that somebody now or in the past who had a position in the government or uh, employed with federal tax dollars is involved or could be involved? You would think so, right? So therefore, don't you think the people that are paying the salaries The people that are on the hook for the money, you know, the citizens, have a right to know what's going on. I most certainly think we do. And I think we could do with a lot more transparency from the executive branch all the way down. There is way too much secrecy for my liking and not enough hard-charging, hard-digging investigative journalists to get to the bottom of it all. Our article tonight is from Law and Crime. And whenever we have a situation like this, when we're talking about stuff that goes on in the courtroom, I like to use the Law and Crime articles. Um, The authors over there, like the one we're going to read tonight, Colin Kombacher, are really good at explaining and breaking down the situation. And they give you a much more detailed look at things than, say, like ABC, who just gives you a scratch of the surface. So that's why I like to refer to law and crime when we're, uh, you you know, talking about this sort of situation, the Maxwell case specifically. Headline, 
federal judge ignores Ghislaine Maxwell's desperate motion, then fast-tracks release of Jeffrey Epstein documents. Authored by Colin Kombacher. And I'll tell you what, that just brings a smile to my face. How, you know, for how long this, this case was in the shadows, for how long things were kept on the low low, it's nice to see things starting to come to light. And it's going to be interesting to see how the unsullied, meaning people who don't really know much about this case or just know a little bit, react when all of these sordid details are coming out in all of their favorite publications. I think it's going to be quite a turn for some people and an eye-opening sort of thing because like I always say right if it's it's one thing for somebody to tell you about that kind of shit it's another thing for you to be able to read it yourself and those documents obviously will be available online and all over the place uh when when they come out they'll be hyperlinked everywhere so people are going to be able to dig in for themselves and and see with their own eyes what these scumbags were up to. And it's going to blow the floodgates open. I've been saying that for a long time. I think this deposition is a pivotal moment in this case. The release of this deposition is a huge deal. And it's going to push things in the direction of heading towards the goal line. A federal court in New York City ruled that deposition testimony from alleged sex trafficker Ghislaine Maxwell must be released within the next two days. That's incredible news. We went from thinking that none of this stuff was ever going to get released to Preska dropping the hammer on these fools and, and going document dump crazy at this point. And if it wasn't for this weak-ass appeal that Maxwell and her lawyers fired off, then this stuff would have already been unsealed. But now that the, the Second uh, Circuit Court of Appeals made their ruling, Preska was having none of the BS. She fast-tracked this shit. She told them, take your motion and you can shove it. And we're getting this out to the people. The order by senior U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska capped off a whirlwind day for Jeffrey Epstein's longtime girlfriend, alleged co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scuzzbag and bipedal serpent, as her attorneys attempted to fight back against a recent appeals court ruling mandating the disclosure of their client's long sought-after deposition. So you know, right away, they went into high gear, right? They're like, all right, technicality time, boys and girls. Let's get busy. How can we find a loophole? And they were hoping that somebody would bite. But Preska and the, 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 the judicial system has been way too generous with Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein's associates for way too long. So th those days are over. If it's not obvious to anyone out there at this point that these guys, Maxwell, the core four, Epstein, and the rest have been burned by assets by the intelligence handlers who were involved, then it should be apparent now that this deposition is coming out. They are on their own. They are swimming in the deep end on their own. No more protection. No more handler to come in and protect them. Nobody to tell Acosta that Epstein is with intelligence. Nothing like that. No life preservers. Nothing. Just them, the federal government, and long, lengthy jail sentences. In light of the Court of Appeals mandate affirming this court's July 23rd, 2020 order, the party shall, as soon as, as soon as is practical, prepare for unsealing, one, the transcripts of Miss Maxwell's and Doe's, Doe One's depositions, and two, all materials quoting those transcripts or disclosing information from those transcripts. Preska wrote in an initial two-page order released early Thursday afternoon, Judge Preska and this ruling is just, it's just awesome, honestly. It really, it's nice to see that there is going to be some movement here. It's nice to see that Ghislaine Maxwell and those around her who tried to use every lever of power and step upon anybody that they possibly could on their way 
to manipulate the system is now being forced to defend herself on the merits of her innocence or her guilt, not on technicalities. The document shall be unsealed in the manner prescribed by the court's July 28, 2020 order and shall include minimal redactions for personally identifiable information, the names of non-parties, as well as the families of non-parties that could be used to identify the non-parties and descriptions of non-party conduct that would allow readers to discern the identity of the non-parties. Preska's original order continued, In order to hasten the unsealing process and to avoid any last-minute disputes, the court advises the parties that the necessary redactions are intended to be as limited in scope as is workable. So ordered in capitals. So she is ordered not only for this stuff to be released, folks, but with minimal redactions. Remember, I was just talking about this. Are we going to see like a typical U.S. federal government release full of redactions? Or... Are we finally getting some transparency? And according to this order, it sure looks like we're going to get a little dose of transparency at the very least. And boy, it's going to be nice. And they can try and hide the identity of Doe 1 and 2, the the, the dudes who are trying to hide their identities. But with all of you on the case, and as hard-charging as you folks are out there with the research... They have little to no chance of that happening. It, the speculation, I, I guess I should say, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines because the speculation is about to go ham. In relatively short order, attorneys for Virginia Roberts filed a letter motion with the Southern District of New York explaining that they would be able to comply with the document production order by the end of the day on Tuesday. So you know that boys and Schiller are ready to rock. Sigrid McCauley is like, look, I got this, Mr. David. Go ahead and have yourself a round of golf. Let your girl get busy. So boys and Schiller, ready for this to be dumped. I am sure uh, Virginia's ready for it to be dumped and for this part of the, the, the case and the trial to be uh, moving forward. And I know for a fact that everybody that's listening is ready for it to be dumped. We represent plaintiff Virginia Roberts in this matter and write to confirm that pursuant to the court's orders dated July 28th, 29th, and 30th, and October 20th of 2020, plaintiff may file the remaining documents at issue and subject to the court's orders later today. The one-page filing notes, Plaintiff respectfully requests the court's confirmation that she may file documents at issue on the Federal Electronic Case Filing System. So it's happening, folks. This is not a joke. This is not a drill. This is not April 1st. This is not fake news. We are on the eve of having these documents dropped right into our laps. And I'll tell you what, I cannot wait. 418 pages is about to be consumed in quick fashion. The controversy before the SDNY was initiated in 2015 as a defamation case between Roberts and Maxwell in 2015. Roberts accused the allegedly criminal power couple of sex trafficking her during the early 2000s. Epstein infamously got off with a slap on the wrist courtesy of federal authorities in Florida. Maxwell is currently facing a trial in New York on various crimes related to the alleged global sex trafficking conspiracy. And again, I love when they say this. Global sex trafficking conspiracy. Because what that means is, words matter, right? What that means is, this is obviously a conspiracy. And we need to keep hammering that home. This is a RICO case. You can't have a conspiracy of one. So Ghislaine Maxwell was in cahoots with a bunch of people, as we all know, and all of these people were part of this criminal enterprise. Now the only thing to do is decide how long of a term in prison each and every one of these dirty sons of bitches gets. Maxwell is currently facing a trial in New York on various crimes related to the alleged global sex trafficking conspiracy. She has consistently denied the charges and asserted her innocence. 
Maxwell's attorneys responded to Roberts with a letter motion of their own, pleading with the court to deny the proposal because the documents were allegedly not redacted enough and asking for additional time because they were unable to reach their client. I mean, really? Again, look at the look at what they do. Remember, watch what they do and once you're aware of the 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 Houdini act that these lawyers try and pull, it's apparent what's going on. Oh, it wasn't redacted enough, but and 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 also we we couldn't get in touch with our client, so we need additional time. Additional time for what? You've had decades redact a couple of things that need to be redacted and turn over the documentation. Enough is enough with the dragging of the feet of Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers. It's getting tired already. The Second Circuit's ruling regarding the appeal was issued late in the day yesterday, attorney Laura, Laura Menninger complained, and that's all they do is complain. Here's an idea, Miss Menninger. Be better at your job. Be better at your job. The federal government is hammering you guys. And you know why, right? Because it's damn hard, and I'm sure Laura Menninger is a, 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 good, a great attorney, right? But it's damn hard to defend somebody who is not telling the truth. It's damn hard to defend somebody who is obviously guilty. And it is damn hard to argue with evidence. Counsel for Miss Maxwell, who is in custody and, and difficult to communicate with, is still considering whether to seek any further emergency appellate remedies and or to provide this court additional information to the extent consistent with the other court's rulings that might impact the release of these materials. This is the letter, mind you, that they wrote to Judge Preska, manager, after the ruling. Counsel for Miss Maxwell requests that the court refuse to confirm Robert's proposed course of action and instead, consistent with today's earlier court order, direct the parties confer as they have been on proposed redactions to Miss Maxwell's deposition prior to its release, the motion concludes. That request, however, was quite literally ignored, at least at first. And uh, it's just, it's not... It's not a situation that Preska is going to be okay with. She was not going to, this letter wasn't going to uh, tug at her heartstrings or uh, make her see the era of her ways or anything like that. Robert's expeditious timeline was quickly endorsed by the court, which briefly signed off on her letter motion in a second order released just moments after Maxwell's formally requested the reprieve, according to courthouse news reporter Adam Classfield. Council may proceed with the filing the relevant documents to the public docket, Judge Preska advised, subject to the previously ordered redactions so ordered. But what... But what look... An uncharacteristically clean and quick win for transparency regarding the latest tranche of the long-awaited Epstein files was not quite meant to be, at least not quite yet. In the third court order of the day, the court noted that signals were crossed and that apparently the judge didn't mean to sign off on Robert's plan without uh, without addressing at least some of Maxwell's complaints. So there was a bit of confusion, right, uh, with all of the, uh, the stuff going on at the court. And there was a situation where Preska signed off on an order by mistake, I guess, here. Right? So, they went back to Preska, and Preska rectified the situation, and this is what she decided. The court received notice of the filing of Miss Maxwell's letter of today after its order directing Miss Roberts to post the relevant materials had been docketed. So, they got it late, right? They got the letter late, and Preska had already signed off, so she went back, being fair, and amended it. Judge Preska briefly noted in the one-page order, In light of Miss Maxwell's letter, counsel shall confer, and the material previously ordered unsealed shall be posted on the docket no later than 9 a.m. on Thursday, October 22nd, 2020, so ordered. So, there it is, folks, 9 a.m., 
Thursday morning, Eastern Standard Time, that is the deadline for these documents to be posted to the docket. So we'll be watching that docket for sure. We'll have our eyes peeled. And I guess Thursday, I won't be doing much, huh? I guess Thursday's a whole day in the studio, and or at least prepared to head that way when things begin to break. So there's where we're at. That's the situation currently with the now unsealed Ghislaine Maxwell defamation, deposition, and all of all the other stuff that goes with it. We're finally at a place where that stuff is available or soon to be available, and we can add in some context. We could fill in some blanks, and we can begin to move the ball towards the goal line. Because this is going to, this is just, remember, there's a lot more coming after this. There are more documents to be released, and who knows what the hell else is in there. But as of now, this is going to be explosive. This is going to have a lot of people talking about the case, and it's going to spell bad times on the horizon for all of the other co-conspirators. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. And for those of you who have donated to the show via the PayPal account, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. All right, everybody. I'll be back later on.